Okay, right. Let, let's sing 146 at the cross. Our brother Zima will lead us. Father, we give you thanks for this evening. We thank you for your love, which has kept us from morning up to this time of the day when we have this opportunity, this privilege to come together to worship around the table of your word. There is nothing else, Lord, that unites us, that brings us together, but that one precious blood of Jesus Christ. And through that precious blood, there is no tribe, there is no race, there is no segregation. For we all come under the wonderful fellowship of the precious blood of Jesus Christ. As we come, Lord, for this uh, home fellowship, may you speak into our hearts. May you give us strength of faith. For faith comes by hearing and hearing of the word of God. So, Heavenly Father, may these words which we shall speak to encourage one another, may they go to our hearts and establish us in the faith the faith not of religion, but the faith which the early saints once earnestly contended for. We are so thankful, Lord, and we appreciate you of your love and your mercies, which are new every morning. Blessed be your holy name, Lord. Amen. Amen. 
All right, I welcome all of you in Jesus' name. Yeah. I trust uh, the Lord blessed you during the week. And uh, it is just good uh, to come in the house of the Lord to meet for fellowship. Um, it is during fellowship that um, we encourage, when our spirits get encouraged, um, sometimes you feel low, but uh, when you come in the fellowship of believers, you find yourself uh, getting encouraged. Amen. Amen. Even the Lord Jesus Christ, when he was in that moment of agony, in that moment of desperation, in that moment when he knew the cross was just so near for him to endure all those terrible abuses that people would put on him, in that crucial moment, he requested the disciples, he said, uh, pray with me, just an hour. Amen? This was the Son of God. This was a man without sin. This was the Christ, the Lord Jesus. A man who was born without sin, indwelled by the fullness of the Godhead. Many times would think, well, he was all powerful, he was all strong. He never needed that. But can you imagine the sinless son of God? He needed company in prayer. He says, pray with me. Just an hour. And as they started praying, what happened? They started feeling tired, isn't it? Feeling sleepy. Their eyes were heavy with sleep, the scripture says. And then the Lord Jesus realized he was praying. He, he was the only one praying. The others were tired. They were overcome with, you know, the tiredness. And, and he turned and looked at them and said, Please, just pray with me. Just for an hour. As he said that, well, they pretended to have started speaking a few words here and there. But sleep was so strong on them and... They found themselves sleeping again. He told them, brothers, won't you pray for me just an hour? It's interesting to see how uh, he saw the importance, how he desired for people to pray with him. It's dangerous as a believer just to, to isolate yourself and no matter how prayerful you are, no, no matter how strong you are, if you don't come to be a part of a prayer meeting, of a Bible study, of having mutual fellowship, your fire inside will start getting low. Your spiritual life begins to go down. That's why there is power in fellowship. And that is why Apostle Paul said, do not give up the habit of what? Meeting together, isn't it? There was a purpose why he said that. Because when we come together like this, it's not just to fulfill a custom. It's not just to do things for the sake of doing them. It's because when children of God, it may not seem important in your eyes, but where children of God are gathered, he's there in their midst. Where two or three are gathered in his name, that verse, the emphasis is not on the two, it's not on the three. It's about his name. Mm. And the name of the Lord is in his word, not in the name of a church or whatever it is. It's when people are humble, they gather to honor the Lord. Then the Lord is in their midst. And really, there are times where you can't actually realize that the presence of God is in your midst. But the presence of God is not on the level of our feelings or our flesh, although sometimes it can touch that realm. I'll tell you one testimony which happened some time back, years back, um, 
uh, when Pentecostal Holiness Church then now, there used to be this woman who was uh, possessed with very bad demons. Very bad demons. And that day, because many times when we gather for prayer meetings, when her demons start actually, it would disrupt a lot of activities, you know, a lot of, I mean, it would disrupt the fellowship itself. And I remember that time, actually, I think we were with Brother Chavula, we, we must have prayed for the place, anointed with oil, you know, normally we would have some time to, to pray before the, the main fellowship starts, you know, just to intercede, just to speak to the Lord, just to pray for the people who enter this place that as they are coming, the Lord may bless them. In this particular time, we started, and I remember I was speaking, I was talking, and it was a small group of believers. And this lady who was demon-possessed, she was also seated in that audience. And it was just a normal meeting. You wouldn't expect there was anything supernatural around us. But it was just normal talk and sharing. And this lady stood up, and she wanted to leave the place. She started feeling uncomfortable. So well, at first we thought, well, she's just standing up maybe to excuse herself. But as she stood up and as she was just about to get out of that room, you know, what happened was so stunning. It was so strange. You know, she, just as she was about to leave the room, she just became, she stood straight, you know, like... Uh, uh, someone unconscious, you know, and then she, like someone hit her, like something hit her, and then she just collapsed like that on the door. So it, it caught everyone unexpectedly, you know. And then later on, we were trying to find out from her what happened. And she said, uh, as I was trying to leave the room, just right on the entrance, right on the door, they stood, a, I saw a huge person standing there. And as I was trying to leave the room, he just pushed me back to go back in the room. You know, like he hit my forehead and then that's how she collapsed on the floor. And that to me has a lot of lessons that there are times actually you can be unconscious and yet the presence of God is, is in the place where you are. Amen? Amen. And what is important is don't be carnal. You, 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 you just need to bring all your thoughts, all your imaginations under the leadership of God when you're in a fellowship. You don't let your thoughts wander to and fro. You're thinking about a certain credit, then later on in another minute you come back in the meeting or you hear a brother is speaking. In another moment you are thinking about a certain deal or credit you had and you, you don't do that. The Bible says the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but they are mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds and casting down what? Yeah. Imaginations imaginations. Imagination comes from the word image. There are so many images that can form in your mind, especially if you've had a busy day. You've been doing so many things. There'll be so many images. And out of those images, you start thinking. It produces a stream of thoughts which can distract you from hearing something the Lord wants you to hear. Because your deliverance, your liberty can be in a simple statement spoken and that can open your eyes to the revelation of God. Because Whenever a sharing is given, God always does it in a certain way that each person, that word will meet a particular need of a person. Like when you eat food, when you eat nshima, or the vegetables, you know there are so many things in those things. Certain things will work on a particular aspect. Certain other things, they, they, will, help you, they will help your liver. Certain other things will help you in this area and that area. And that is why when you don't eat food, eventually you die because there is no energy. Uh, the organs in your body won't be sustained in a way they are supposed to be sustained. Like it is in the physical, so it is in the spirit. Your spirit needs to feed on the food which God intended it to feed on. Eh? It is in Matthew 4, the scripture says, uh, Man shall not live by bread alone, but by what? Every word that proceeds from God. In other words, we are a dual being. We feed on things that are of the flesh to maintain our physical bodies, our physical lives. But inside you, there is a soul. That soul cannot feed on nsima or any kind of food. 
that soul can only feed uh, on spiritual things. Because we only became a living soul. A man only became a living soul after God breathed. After the breath of life from God. That is what led to a man becoming a living soul. Meaning without the breath of God upon your life, you are dead although you are walking. You are spiritually dead, isn't it? Eh? When you remember the vision which Ezekiel had, he saw many bones in the valley. Many bones. And then a question was asked to him by God. Can these bones live? Ezekiel answered wisely. He said, you know, Lord. And then God said, prophesy, speak to them. And as he spoke, there came a rushing mighty wind. That wind wasn't just, uh, you know, it was a symbol. He's seeing this thing in a vision. And of course, that prophecy is speaking about the nation of Israel. But we know, as we read, that that wind came upon those bones. It blew upon the bones and sinews started coming up. Bone started touching another bone and flesh started manifesting and they rose up and the word of God says it became a mighty army. What did it? The breath of God. The wind of God's spirit. That's the way it is to us. When you look at the world, a lot of people are dead bones. They are dead bones because their lives are so detached from the reality of God's word. All they do is wake up, eat, live a carnal life and just live in the wisdom of this world. You know, what is the wisdom of this world? The customs we've been taught. The science we've been taught. And you can't really live life by the wisdom of this world. You know, we need the breath of God to be able to live. Because only then can we fulfill the purposes which God intended for us.